one of the reasons we call this meeting is to look at sort of starting to formulate or adopt a social media uh, policy. Uh, as you all know, there were several things that were said on social media, media and we just want to address our employees and how they look at things and direct things on there. Bubba took, uh, took, sort of took the lead on this. He contacted the AAC, got a copy of their social media policy. He got a copy of Blivels and a copy of Osceola's. And he sort of condensed this down. Uh, if you'd like to read this, if you see something that needs to be added, something that we need to take away, but what we'd like to do after this is with the approval of this committee, forward this on to Jeremy Thomas to read. And if he does not have any issues with what we put in here, uh, then move it to the full court. Uh, but we do need to get some type of social media policy in place. Uh, I haven't read this. I don't know if y'all have yet or not. But take a minute to read it and let's go from there. What is the reason we're doing the social media? Almost every city, county, state has some type of social media policy. And it's mainly to keep people from posting things. You know, if you work for the county, you don't need to be out here posting things negative about the county. You don't need to be out here posting. You don't need to be out here jumping on other people's bandwagons who are doing things, saying things about the county. You just need to let them do their talking. Everybody has their opinion, everybody has a right to their opinion. That doesn't mean that you have to express it out there on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. That's that was the concern that I heard and that's all I'm looking for. You know, just keep in mind that you are a county employee. This doesn't address things, this is strictly county employees and their use of social media. And also, a lot of this we'll probably talk about during working hours. You especially don't want to do things that would be derogatory or saying things about another elected official or anything like that. And I'm not saying that's happened, I'm just saying this sort of gives them some guidelines to work from. Well, I've got a couple of questions. Okay. If it's not happening, why are we, why are we doing this? We didn't say it wasn't happening. We didn't say it was happening. We didn't say it wasn't. We did. I didn't say it. I, what I meant to say is there have been some issues where things have been said on Facebook. The employees should have stayed out of it. They didn't. And we just want to we want to set the groundwork from this point forward. I can appreciate what you're trying to do. But in the seventh grade, I had a course called Civics. Civics was about government. The Constitution, the first ten amendments, is called the Bill of Rights. Yes, sir. The first one in the Bill of Rights is freedom of speech. Yes, sir. Freedom of us to speak, freedom of the press to talk. Yes, sir. Now, you're limiting where they can talk. But the Constitution and the Bill of Rights doesn't limit that, and I'm not sure that we can either. We're not saying they can't be on social media. Yes, it does. No, we're not saying they can't be on there. But they can't, you know, it doesn't allow people to bully. You didn't say bullying. It does say bullying in here. You're not allowed to bring up racist. Uh, 
accusations, racist comments. Well, now, Mr. Chairman, that's entirely different than that's freedom that's of the speech. If you want to do something about bullying and sexist and all that stuff, then get this narrowed down to cover that. Instead of saying you can't put anything on Facebook, uh, you can't put anything on the internet. This specifically says internet, and we we post to the internet every day. And, and we're, not saying, we're not saying they can't post. We're saying they should not post on things like racism, uh, cyberbullying, uh, religious beliefs. You know, as a county employee, we have to respect other people's rights and beliefs. Not tell them they can't get on social media. I, I'm on social media daily. And, you're, and you're on there doing company time. Oh, maybe I know yes. you are. Yes, sometimes. But yet, but I also, I also but answer yet questions saying, through there for that all these other people cannot be. No, I'm not saying that either. So I'm saying they have to. Somebody is saying it. Okay. <clears throat> says employees shall maintain an appropriate level of professionalism during working hours and non-working hours. Do you? It's not saying that, yes. But you're not, I don't, there's a lot of things on Facebook I'd like to comment on, but I don't. But you are on social media during working hours. Yes. Um, I just don't find this something that we ought to be doing I think we ought to be doing something specific and not just shooting in the dark and waiting to hear somebody call. Okay. Now, the way I, I read this, he's not saying that we cannot get on there, but we should be careful of what we're saying when we get on there. That's exactly right. That's yeah. it. That's, that's all we're trying to tell you. I cannot say uh, what, because uh, 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 I guess I'm an employee too, I cannot say what somebody on the street can say. Negative. <laughs> well. The county employees, as well as the corn court and the elected officials, we all work for the voters of Mississippi County. We don't need to be out bashing the voters of Mississippi County. None of us. I mean, we don't need to be attacked. We don't need to be calling names on social media. That's what this is basically about. I mean, I don't need to. I mean, that, that's not saying you can't get on there and say I'm a Christian. I, I hope everybody does get on social media and say they're a Christian. But I don't want somebody to call you something because. Maybe you're a Catholic or, you know, you're a Pentecostal. I mean, you know, that's, that's, the, you don't attack another person's religion. That's what I'm saying. Or that's what we're trying to say. Yeah, all we're... And this is not something in concrete, but, you know, if, if it's illegal for us to do this, our attorney's going to tell us we can't do it. But every state agency, almost every... I mean, even private companies have social media policies. Well, I think social media is certainly a form, you know, of getting, it's a form of media that we can't ignore. And in the handbook, if I'm not mistaken, we have policy regarding employees talking to the press and how that should be handled and handing out information from the county. So to some degree, I mean, I understand about narrowing it down, but it would only make sense for us to have a social media policy. And if the Association of Counties has one and the city of, I mean, most organiz, most, I mean, most people have one these days. It's a, you know, you've got all sorts of different forms of social media. You know, you have Facebook, you have Twitter. I mean, there's, it's almost endless and you're, yeah, and I'm, I'm not trying to tell anybody they can't be on it. I'm not trying to tell them they're not entitled to an opinion. But I, I, I would hate to see somebody go out there and pick on a set. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. Somebody, think is, somebody is, has a disability and somebody goes out there and says something negative about them. That is not to be done by people 
who are elected to represent everybody. You're supposed to represent the people equally and fairly. And if one of our employees or one of the elected officials was doing that, first of all, if I, I do as an elected official, I'd hope they'd be elected, first of all. But if one of our employees did, I would hope the elected official would take care of it. Sheriff, do you have one of the, a policy in your department? Yes, we do. Okay. Have you read this one? I don't think I have. Is this one any broader than what yours is? Can somebody read it out loud so we'll know what it says and not everybody has a copy of it? Yeah. Social media policy. Social media includes all means of communicating or posting information or content of any sort on the internet. The same principles and guidelines applicable to county employee conduct also apply to county employees' activities online. Employees shall maintain an appropriate level of professionalism during working hours and non-working hours. Any conduct that adversely affects an employee's job performance, the performance of fellow employees, or otherwise adversely affects the interests of the county or citizens and or citizens may result in disciplinary action up to and including termination. This policy applies to comments made under the employee's name and under pseudonym used by the employee or username. Harassment, cyberbullying, or any county employee of any county employee will result in termination. Racist or sexist comments are comments that target the religious beliefs or others will result in termination. County employees should avoid posts or likes or other social media activity during working hours and on county-owned equipment unless authorized to do so by supervisor or consistent with county policy. State law prohibits engineering or electioneering by public servants during working hours. Employees should consider any political activity to be electioneering. Sheriff, is that any broader than yours? Or? It, this is uh, going to be broader. If I'd have known that, I'd brought our policy in. But uh, you have to have some type of social media policy to protect the county in this case, as well as our department. I think every state agency has one, if I'm not mistaken. They, they do. And that was why the city went to one, to protect the city and its employees from being because you can't, believe it or not, you can't be sued over what you put on Facebook, on Facebook and Twitter and everything else. You'll be sued for anything, remember? <laughs> sued for anything? Yeah, we do. $179. Oh, we do know that. <laughs> and, it, it, you know, this was <coughs> something I've done with the help of my wife, by the way. And, if, if you know, I've got these other policies, and if somebody wants to take more time to look at different things, and, maybe even be broader or be, you know, generic or just whatever. I'm not, it's not gonna hurt my feelings. But I think this is just short and sweet and covers pretty much what we need to do. What would the procedure be for disciplinary action? Well, that's up to, that would be up to the department head to handle the disciplinary action. Of course, all actions are can be appealed by the grievance policy. If we feel that it has violated your constitutional right, then we would reverse that in the, uh, the personnel committee under the grievance policy. But it's up to the department head, because this will be a policy that each department head uses to decide if they're, if they're having a problem. Could be, I mean, a department head could do multiple things. They could do an oral counseling statement. You know, just say, look, you know, try not to do this anymore, or try not to be go this far. You know, it could be, it could be that. You know, I mean, there, there could be a letter of reprimand. I mean, it could, be, it could go from, depending on the severity of what you, what a person did, it could go from here to here. So I'm just saying, would it be in writing? Well, it should be, but that would be up to the department head. Uh, when I was with the police department, we could give a verbal warning. 
We could do a written letter of counseling. We could do a lit written letter of reprimand. We could do suspension. And then the final was termination. Now, each lieutenant could do each one of those up to termination. That was left up to the chief of police. So it would be up to your supervisor or the department head to handle it. And then, of course, outside that, you always got the grievance policy to bring it before this committee to see if it is, uh, at which point you have the right to bring an attorney. They can have an attorney. There's a court recorder, the whole nine yards. And Stephen, your job, I mean, your job basically is social media, so you're going to be doing that during working hours. So that's not, I mean, this is not. I don't have a problem. I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't have a problem with social media. Um, I'm just asking what other any county employees who aren't present. Right. You know, we're not, like I said, I don't want to restrict anybody's right to say something, but I don't want them to, I want them to keep in mind that they have to remember that they do represent the county and they do represent the elected official labor. So you can't just be out there spewing things that you know nothing about or not true. You can't be out there condemning, you know, I play with my wife all the time because she used to be Catholic. I pick on her about it. I wouldn't do that to somebody on Facebook because really, as far as I'm concerned, all religions are equal. I don't know which ones are going to heaven, which ones aren't. Not my place to judge. If anybody don't, doesn't want to do anything different, I'll make a motion. Motion. I'll make a motion that we send this policy that we drawn up to our attorney that upon his approval let it go to the full court for a vote. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. We'll refer this over to Jeremy Thomas for him to look at, and then especially when you look at if we have stepped on any lines or if we are in good shape with it. All right. I got a call to Kelly. Will you take care of that, please? Yes, and I have one question before y'all. Okay. Um, do you have any idea what the process is for an updated ASAP report in 2020? We've been doing it every other year and the last one we had was at 15. <coughs> I didn't know if you wanted or if y'all want to ask finance and then someone let me know that's fine too I just did uh let's you know I, I let finance decide if they want to pull one this year I would think we would but uh then again finance may decide that we want to wait a year Does anyone else have anything else to bring before the personnel committee? All right, then I'm going to adjourn this meeting and we'll move into the police and fire committee meeting. I'm going to stop it. So you can. Go ahead, I'm just going to <clears throat> That to take a picture of and put out. Uh, you know, it's going to the jet. It's going to uh, the attorney first. To look at. All right. We call police and fire committee meeting to order. Uh, have sheriff here, Joseph. Uh, is that right? They had a fire in Maria. I think that's where he went. got a fire down in Wilson, and he's been called to come down there for some reason. Wait. Wait. That's it. Wait. I kept that. It was. It used Joseph. to be Joseph. It used to be Joseph. I kept that. <laughs> I said Joseph. That don't sound right. I, I went along with it because I was thinking Joseph. <laughs> uh, I think that the emergency plan was emailed to everyone. Uh, please take an opportunity to read it. If you did not get a copy, let's get with uh, Wayne and get a copy of it and read it. 
because we do need to approve that for use in the county for emergency procedures. It is an emergency plan, my understanding, it's fairly comprehensive. I've glanced over it, but it's been a while since I did it, so I need to look at it again. Uh, the sheriff contacted me this morning, and I'm going to let him sort of give you the update on it, but uh, he contacted me because we are supposed to have a uh, protest in Blyville. And I believe that Bible PD has contacted his department. And uh, the sheriff got to looking at equipment, and there's some concern, you know, with the way that things have been going in other cities. Memphis is having a curfew from 10 to 6 at night. Uh, Little Rock has had the state police. As a matter of fact, I learned that some of our state troopers are there and have been for the past three days. So uh, he's asked us about some equipment and there's a price. They have the money in their budget to cover it. Just want to let y'all know about it so that you know what's going on. Sheriff, sure you want to tell us what you figured out there? <clears throat> what we've, uh, we're placing an order when in today. I don't have all the delivery dates back yet for right him. We don't have any right here, basically. And what's going on around the country right now, I think it uh, behooves us to obtain that equipment in case we need it, hopefully. And we pray we don't ever have to need uh, use it or need it. But we, we haven't had that before, so I haven't asked for it to put it in the budget. But this time, I went ahead and ordered some supplies, i.e. Uh, ride helmets, uh, uh, my gas mask. We had uh, 14 for our SRT team members, so we ordered uh, 14 more, and I've ordered uh, 28 ride helmets and uh, 28, uh, what was the other item we had? Uh, no. Well, uh, 10 yards and uh, to take care of that uh, situation, then we can store them in our armory when they're not in use, but when we need them, we can have, they'll be available, but that's something the sheriff's offices and police departments around the the state uh, haven't put a lot of emphasis on in the past because uh, we, we haven't needed them so I haven't pursued that but right now it looks like it's only prudent to do that so uh, I've got the money in our budget doesn't anything else have to be appropriated to, to make that expenditure it's probably going to be uh, six to thirty weeks before I can get it uh, based on this COVID epidemic uh, you know we've got the production shut down so it's going to take a while to get those items so uh, we, we put those orders in today. And I feel it's just necessary because uh, right now, I don't know how many has been watching the news, uh, but inside Arkansas, Little Rock downtown is being destroyed right now, as we speak. This has been going on since Saturday. Uh, the state police is being taxed to their limit, along with a certain contingent of National Guardsmen. Um, I understand the march was led last night or today by the city mayor down there and then all this destruction going on. So the governor's got his hands full. Uh, I think we all need to pray for that situation down there. Uh, I don't know where it's going, but it's taxing all assets pretty heavily. Uh, it's, it's basically out of hand down in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we don't want that to come to our communities. Uh, we can't have that. Uh, peaceful protests are great. I think it's deserved and needed, but when it gets out of hand, it's, in my opinion, it's criminal. And the good people are not doing this. Uh, one I was told this morning, they had three bus loads of agitators, riders, busting into Little Rock. So it's not necessarily local people, it's outsiders. Um, we can't have that. We can't have that. That's not the way to uh, bring justice to, to our country, and it's, uh, God forbid, that's happening to us right now, and hopefully this will end, uh, and we get back to a peaceful vein, get our people back to work, get past this COVID epidemic. And um, so anyway, that order went in today, and that's all that I really want to What's let you guys know. I know you told me yesterday you didn't mention the shin guards, 
We were here right out here in 10,000. Uh, it's going to be, uh, the other end is going to be about 11,000, maybe 12, depending on what these shin guards cost. Right now, I think they're $23 a pair. So we're, we're going to be spending around 12,000 plus tax. Uh, what they're, well, the state police told me what equipment they're using, a little rock, and they're, they're taxed pretty heavily. Matter of fact, they're sending seven more from Mississippi County today to Little Rock, so uh, we won't have very many troopers here for a little while. And so that bad, it's bad. Okay. Uh, a few months back, as most of you know, my wife is big into animal rescue. Uh, there was a situation that happened down in Georgia where an animal was killed in a very inhumane way. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has been investigating that. Sheriff, I'm not going to step over you, but I'm going to ask, I'm going to let Rob explain this part of it. Go right ahead. If you don't mind. Uh, I'm going to ask that we move in a a request for an appropriation of $2,500 for CID for uh, investigative purposes, uh, equipment type things. Uh, Rob, you want to explain what happened with this last? Yes, um, our, our Crown Lab at Little Rock could not do any DNA comparison of the dog. So we had to send it to California. It was actually the University of California. And they did the DNA analysis, uh, come back with a, a, a match. But the bill was $1,300. Uh, if, if Little Rock could have could done the uh, analysis, it would have been free. So uh, the $1,300, we had nowhere to take it out of. We had to take it out of some other account to you know, pay for it. But I think there was some reward money that's going to come back to replace it. Yes, we're going to try to get the reward money paid over to the sheriff's department because it looks like they're going to clear this case based off of that DNA evidence. But what we would like in the future, because CID does not have a budget to buy your paper bags for evidence collection, uh, different things that they have to collect, they would like to be able to do that. And if this comes up again, have the money to cover something some lab testing that might have to be done outside of the state crime lab. Uh, yeah, the other thing they buy comes out of one of the sheriff's other line items and some stuff in out of theirs. Well, this would be specifically for CID for investigations and things of that nature. The battle cruelty stuff. Well, any type of case where they need something. This just happened to be an animal cruelty case that we had come up this time. But like they, they have to buy, as you know, they have to buy paper bags because you cannot put, uh, you cannot put bloody clothes into a plastic bag because it will deteriorate the evidence. So you have to use paper, and there's other circumstances: fingerprint powders, <coughs> fingerprint brushes in cases. You have to have boxes to ship guns, uh, long guns, and. Uh, <coughs> Handguns had to all of them had to be sent to the crime lab to be analyzed. It's called Operation Shutdown. Uh, it's something that's mandatory. So those boxes they cost, you know, and then the sheriff ends up having to take the money out of another fund to pay for them. Is twenty five hundred dollars sufficient? <laughs> we got to start somewhere. They are. I was trying to give them enough to do some, but. Rob, what do you think? They get them started anyway. I don't know. You'd have to ask, you know, I don't know. Or is it something that you're going to take out of his budget that's already there or is something add to it? I think this would be an additional line item we would have to put in. I mean, that'd be up to the sheriff to whatever he wanted to do. Let me, just, let me ask a question real quick just to make sure I understand. Um, there was some, uh, Justice White mentioned, I guess, in one of the Finance Committee meetings a couple of weeks ago that um a, a few years back some things had changed and uh, in some of the budgets um like the road budget the judge is actually able to move money from line items to other line items 
Um, would that be the same thing with the sheriff here? Would he be able to move money into that line item from one of it? To, I mean, if he's worried about, I mean, normally if it comes out of small equipment or wherever it comes out of, if he's worried about coding it correctly, couldn't, I mean, couldn't we well, move money? Well, that's part of the problem. Right now we don't have a line item for this at all. Uh, and I would guess that yes, he could uh, if he had spare funds, but like just like in this situation with the tactical, the tactical what did they need for this situation that may come up? Uh, he had basically nineteen thousand left over. Well, he's spending twelve hundred of it today, and we don't know if there are other expenses that may come up. That's why we ask for this specific line item to be funded. In addition, because most, like, I think, thought that their small item, uh, small equipment budget, you know, when we bought the tasers, we had payments every year for uh, five years. But uh, I thought that that still had to come out of there. Apparently, it's already been made this year. So, and the answer to your question is, I think it's a start. I don't know if it's quite enough. If they have to do very many outside tests, no, it wouldn't be. But they have, they are very careful about what they do with stuff like that. Uh, this one, I didn't realize that the state crime lab couldn't do the DNA testing for them. Not a minimum. Well, I know the case you're talking about. I know the girl who the dog belonged to, and it was bad. And uh, so I I support this totally. Do you may have a motion for that? I would make a motion that we clean, create a line item and or Senate finance to create a line item and move twenty five hundred dollars over into their sheriff's office budget to for evidence collection. I second it. Uh, is there any other discussion? Anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask Rob or the sheriff or even Captain Gladden. Thanks for being right. <laughs> that that kidney stone's got you messed up. <laughs> oh, you don't know how bad. <laughs> when I passed it long ago, everybody heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, there's no further discussion. Uh, discussion. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, well, the other item that we had was uh, Wayne and the uh, emergency plan for the county. So I will encourage all of you, if you don't have it, let me or Wayne know, and we'll try to get you a copy emailed out. Read through it, uh, because we do need to approve it. Uh, I don't know, I guess we'll have to, Set up another meeting at a later date. I'll get try to get with Wayne and see when he wants to do that. Sheriff, did you have anything else you need? You must no, I do not. Thank you. To this? Not unless there's any questions of me. All right. If we have Z, does anybody on court have anything that we need today? No. Um, I do think the just a little update on the uh, energy and property. I think the architect has sent an email over to Morgan to discuss the uh, security equipment for the new courthouse. So they're in the kind of works of trying to figure out what we need and what that's going to look like. I saw that on the x-ray equipment uh -huh. for the door. I didn't realize we were doing that, but it is a good idea. So. Um, it, it will enhance our security. And we already built the side door door? Uh, no, I have not heard anything as far as uh, there was the there's the request for change, but I haven't heard anything since then. And I do appreciate you sending the email to the committee. That helps out a lot. <laughs> because I think in the past, a lot of things have gone over the justice of the pieces head that we did not know about and we should have. But I'm glad you sent an email to the, keeping us about everything. And so I, I mentioned to you guys that I thought I had a picture of the chandelier, but I don't. It was a different picture. Um, but you did get the pictures of the three, yes, the three light fixtures that are being restored. So, I'll three, work I or four. four. I'm sorry. 
want the sand to literally be in the center yeah. one and not which side. And there's also, I think what it, I think what it, I think there's three light fixtures being restored, but there's the chandelier plus four more lights because the chandelier really doesn't provide efficient light. So it's basically five, eight yeah, lights. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's more than just a chandelier. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. No, really. But exactly. I, I think but it's not where we have three lights. Three, 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 three lights being restored, four new lights, yes. and then the chandelier. Yeah. So it's moving right along, so. Yeah, they, as a matter of fact, I was over there this morning, they're pouring more of the footing for the new section of the building and I was in the first floor. Uh, matter of fact, the plumbers had me checking the, uh, their water lines for the existing building that they have already replaced and got ready to go in, so. I do know there was some talk last week about um, uh, that potentially we did not have enough money appropriated to meet the bills for this upcoming month but that's not going to be the case it looks like we're going to be fine um should make it until we have our next meeting that's good yeah i saw energy over there yesterday so everything is in the process of moving those lines to uh yes sir they have their new poles set they have not moved their work well they have taken the wire down but they are not going to restrain it until after the tower is dropped and they are waiting on Ritter. Uh, they went over there and cut the tops off the poles right above Ritter's cable. So they're waiting on Ritter to come and move their cable and then they will drop the tower and then restrain the wire and then that part they'll be out of their way. So. And I, but one of the things I don't know if this will make a difference in anything that we've discussed today, but I know that they had, there was potential that the tower was going to come down on Saturday. Stephen, do you know if that's? It'd be a JT question. Okay. Um, unless unless Ritter gets there, that's not going to happen. Okay. Because this is going to take out a major fiber optic cable. Okay. It's on that. It's still left on those two telephone poles. But I think that, that was one of the things he was talking with them about last week, and so he didn't think it would happen this past Saturday, but he felt like this upcoming Saturday would probably be. Now, when I was there this morning, they haven't even started looking, so that might be. Uh, I know this is police and fire committee meeting, but did any of the other elected officials have anything they need to say or add or any questions? Unless we have other business, uh, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Okay. We're adjourned. Okay. <laughs> I like it when they're like, short. <laughs> <laughs>